three, two, one, live. There we go. There we go. All right. How's it going, everybody? Sorry for the delay. Our oldest son had a doctor's appointment at 2 today, and so T is getting ready to go. And, it's, you know, it's not too far. Uh, and she, we go to start her car, and uh, it doesn't start. So, I mean, at, naturally at that point, we either reschedule or we try to push things to make it work and so she called the doctor's office and said we're gonna be a little bit late I jumped her car with my car and but it wouldn't start still or I tried to jump you know and uh, so I guess the battery is shot or the cables are shot and we looked at the battery and it's a four-year-old battery so we're thinking okay we probably need to buy a new battery on her car we just bought a new battery for a different car that we're giving to one of the daughters one of our one of my stepdaughters but we already got the place taken off that, so we can't take that. So I let T take my car. It's you know what? Doesn't really matter, does it? No. Sorry for being a little bit late. It is what it is. But um, I'm here now, and uh, I'll answer any questions you have about RPG Maker or HUD Maker Ultra. I'm gonna work on my project. I'll start by showing you where I uh, left off last night. And then we're going to continue to make a few changes, and then I'm going to add a few new things and just hang out and stuff. T is gone, obviously. She's taking uh, our stepson to the doctor's appointment, and uh, we have to do a lot more of those because, you know, COVID shut a lot of stuff down, and we kind of postponed some stuff due to COVID, and now, like, it's kind of stuff's lifting, and we're like, okay, let's make our scheduled appointments, and... Now they got to go in and get shots, and you know how it is, right? So, um, that's that. Sorry for the delay. How you guys doing today? What's up, Poca Latte? Hello. What's up, Wrath of Wood? Tony Dev 407 H. Dracon, how you doing? Kazuya and Smash has breathed new life into me. <laughs> it's not bad, Dracon. It's, it's really nothing. It's just... You, we just gotta buy a new battery and possibly some new cables. Not a big deal. Just it just uh, delayed the stream because we had to figure all this out at two o'clock instead of. Uh... They're not. They're not too bad. We've had several worse car issues. This is not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. It's just caused a little delay. That's all it is. No, no big problem whatsoever. So anyway, let's play the game and I'll show you what I've got so far. This is an idle clicker RPG. I mean, there's not a lot of clicking involved. It's more of just an idle RPG type of game. And you've got your main menu. We'll select one of the skills we have. We can train uh, our lumberjack by trying to get some regular logs. And then we got the log and it adds to the stack. And this is our experience bar. I see redundancy here. And I'm gonna have to have six, possibly eight. We're gonna do with six for now different types of uh, resources so six different types of ore six different types of logs and whatnot so I'm going to instead put a yellow bar along the bottom I was thinking the top but um, and I'm not sure maybe the top I think the bottom makes the most sense I'll put it along the bottom here we'll have like skill level um, and then and then experience bar right and then and then they'll both have they'll have the and they will have their individual progress bars the green one <clears throat> but we don't need to have uh the experience bar on each of these it seems kind of weird so i can pause it anywhere and um train the other one and you 
I get nine experience for this log and thir and twelve experience for this log. But this log takes a second more. Every second more, it's three more experience. This takes three. This takes four. Right. So the idea is, no matter which log you're chopping, you're still going to get the same amount of experience per second. You're just going to be harvesting different items. I also want to put requirements on having uh, to get the second types of logs. Like I want them to be level required. Like this one will be level one. Obviously, no requirement. But then moving on, hardwood log and forth and going forth to the next tiers will have level requirements. For example, you'll need level 15 skill to get hardwood logs, and then probably 30 for the next one, and then and then uh, for uh, 30, 45. Uh, 15, 30, uh, 30, 45, 60, 75, and that's what will be the requirements for them. Yeah, so let's go ahead and start that. I'm going to be using SRD's HUD maker mostly for this. I do have a few plugins. I can show you some of the plugins that I'm using. I don't know why it seems it wants to pop up on the other screen, on the other monitor, but it does sometimes. So I, I've got the core engine. The message core, items core, options core, and save core from Vigistella. These are all free plugins. And then SRD Ultra Base and HUDmaker Ultra. Those are also free, but I'm using one paid pr plugin in this uh, project. And it's the, uh, the pro version. <clears throat> so I have $40 in plugins and a bunch of free ones. And it's just this one for 40 bucks. And I think it's completely worth it if you're interested in uh, using the advanced features or extra functionality from the HUD maker, um, it's definitely worth picking up. But you can still do a lot of this stuff without uh, buying anything, like all the plugins, except for the, you know, anyway, you get it. The next thing uh, I want to do is uh, take, take these off. So essentially, I th these are the same. These are the same thing. The only reason that they're named different is because um, this, I just to help me remember where they were positioned. What I'm gonna delete, delete. What I'm gonna do is delete that one. I'm gonna bring this down a bit, this down a bit, and then I'm gonna take this one and position it differently, probably right here somewhere, and um, change its width to be twice as much, say 800, but also start it off in like. Like that. Mm, kind of want more. Let's start it off at. Oh, it's going to be centered probably. Let's start this off at 500 exposition with a width of 900. Huh. Why don't we center it? That gives us some room on this side and some room on this side. <clears throat> I think that's probably fine. Mm, I'm also thinking of increasing the height on these. So we'll do that since we're getting rid of one of the things here. So the height will be 24. Bring this down a bit, bring this down a bit. What's up Wrath of Wood? How are you doing today? today <clears throat> how are you doing to do you've been using it recently that's cool have you had any issues any snags any problems any questions about it All right, let's read. Oh, actually, I don't even need to reload because it'll just uh, update automatically. There's a there's a um, f uh, a parameter. Fucking brain. There's a parameter inside the plugin that lets you toggle that, and that's done. Why does it keep jumping on the other monitor? Give me a break. For those of you wondering what's going on, when I click on it, it's opening on another monitor. If you press the Windows key, Shift, and Up button, it will it will go to uh, a different monitor, so I can. I can select a window and press left or right and put it on other monitors like that. So it's like a some I'm using window shortcuts to get around the, the weirdness of it popping up on another screen. Not only does it pop up on another screen, but it pops up blocking off this section so that you can't even move it. You can't even select it. It's like it's like that but without a little bit of pixels that you can select on. So it's like the only option you have is to click on it, press Windows key shift and up or left and right 
and and to move it to a monitor where you can be able to click on this section right here this bar weird bugs with multiple monitors uh it may have something to do with uh, resolutions being different on monitors or uh, using a 50% zoom on certain monitors or just my particular setup U ultimately it's a Windows 10 thing but um, I've noticed it with not just RPG Maker MZ but with other applications so that's a little shortcut for you Windows key shift and the arrow keys can move windows around and the, that might come in handy at some point for you to know but anyway inside of the HUD Maker Ultra so you have to do it again there's a plugin parameter called auto reload HUD data and if you it's false to, by default but if you set that to true what will happen is um, you can adjust something on the fly for example let me move this up and if I save it when I go back into this it moves it automatically see how I brought it up and I didn't have to press F5 and reload so that's kind of a cool function and I really like that are we still centered Six sixty-two for the center is twelve. We'll see twelve eighty divided by two is seven. Wait, this is six hundred and forty. Six forty, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Hey, ready player, how are you doing today? T is on the road taking our son to the doctor appointment. Just to check up. And some immunity things. Can you use a range of variables as a condition? I mean, what do you what do you mean? I'm not sure like what you're exactly asking can you use a range of variables as conditions a range of variables like I, I don't know man uh, you can use a variable in in a condition you can use several variables to have several conditions and you can stack a condition in, inside of a condition it's called nesting um, to get your you know, full amount of requirements that you need for a, you know, switch to turn. True or false? Hey, KV. He says, desktop OSs still have to catch up to the reality of multiple monitor configurations despite them being an increasingly common... Yeah. I agree. <clears throat> anyway, we've moved the experience bar here. I kind of feel like putting skill level over here now because... I'm gonna hold down control that way I don't snap to a grid and I can just put this where I want it to be skill level let's just save that and jump back into our project bring this up here and now we see skill level 4 as this fills up and we don't have redundancy there's no um, two bars showing the same thing. You know, that kind of makes more sense that way. Yeah, I would say that that's probably better. Uh, one thing to point out though is um, this, the code here isn't, isn't right because it's only showing the um, progress for Lumberjack. So I have to adjust this to update to any progress that's going on in here. Or remove it I'm not gonna worry about that right now like it will track if I'm training this one because it's set to train that one right so what I would like to do next is um, add the other woods since I've added them here I want to create the, the the buttons for them to train as well I've even set up the switches and done most of the work already so uh, it shouldn't be too much work. It's just messing around inside of the HUD maker. 
So let's go ahead and copy hardwood log. We're going to take the everything from here. Copy this and paste it here. And I'm going to move this to where I feel like it would look right, look good. And I know that the X position is going to be um, zero. But for, for the Y position, uh, I don't know how much far down we want it to be. I think we'll go by with what it looks like. I could always move the entire thing like that. So we're going to just let that go. So this is, we're going to go down through here and systematically change all of them. Excuse me? What the fuck happened? There it is. Let's right click and bring it in line here. Open this up. And we'll start by... Mm, I have to edit this way because double clicking would normally open up the component for you to edit. But because it is a container, it just like closes the container. So we'll right click and edit and change the name. The third wood, I think I called it white wood because it's like snow. I was going to call it snow wood or frost wood. White log. All right, going to the next one. Get rid of the dash copy and we'll call it Lumberjack 3 button background. We're going to change it so that it doesn't call run Lumberjack 2, but instead calls run Lumberjack 3. This one is Lumberjack 3 text. This one is white log. Uh, I believe this is the icon. No, it's not. This is just name text. So we need to name these texts and adjust this to say white log. <clears throat> at drifty wood gaming uh, i forget how do i get you to demo a first impressions in your channel something about discord or how what how or what how how what <laughs> uh basically you just uh, you pay 30 bucks through patreon uh i think there's a 20 dollars spot open that i need to close because that's a legacy one that's that's closing. So if you're quick, you can get it for 20 bucks. Uh, I'm gonna close that if I remember after the stream. Um, but it's otherwise it's 30 bucks on Patreon. And then once you're backing on Patreon, you send me a link on Discord and we schedule a date and that's just it. And then we go out on a date and we have a we have a dandy time. You know what I'm saying? Let's change this icon. You can also do a pay if you don't like Patreon, you can do a PayPal one-time donation of 35 bucks white log icon and we'll change this icon zero one and this is two should be the third one <clears throat> excuse me This is Lumberjack 3 progress bar, which we need to update to say Lumberjack 3 current progress and Lumberjack 3 max progress. Confirm. No problem, man. And that's essentially it since we've got that set up. I'm going to just save it and, and see what happens. There we go. It looks like it's working. Oh, yeah. See, we did all of the stuff for this in RPG Maker MZ yesterday. So now it's just 
doing some copy paste renaming inside the HUD maker since we've already set up our common events to call and variables and switches and we already did the work yesterday so now we just realize our work right it's kind of cool I'm gonna make an entire like equip like equip your character menu and an inventory that just shows items and, and try to come up with some kind of idle combat system uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be really cool. Like, obviously, there's there'll be some things that I'll have to compromise, and and what I want may not actually happen. But that's always the the nature of the beast. And uh, just seeing how fast the progress is uh, has happened using this is uh, encouraging. So I really like that. Let's go ahead and, and continue this setup by copying this whole thing, and then clicking here and, and pasting. And then we're going to right click and drag this in here and expand that. And then we're going to, I suppose we're gonna offset by the same amount of distance. Let's see, which one is this one on? It's on 0, 104. So this should be on 640, 104. I think it snapped to where it would be like lined up. There is some kind of snapping, which I think is cool. There is a little bit of an alignment issue that I, because of how it's done. I think what I need to do is change the alignment to left. That's what we need to do. Change all of the alignments to left. That way when I snap to grid, it will It'll look right, and they'll all be like, they'll all be, I don't know, right or wrong as a matter of an opinion, but they'll all look like I want them to look. <clears throat> so this will be Lumberjack 4 button, background. And this is going to run Lumberjack 4 common event, which we've already set up yesterday. We also need to right click and edit this one to call it, I believe it is Birch is what we named it, Birch Log. Let's switch this song, that's fine. It's kind of heavy. I like the MZ OST. Train Lumberjack 4 text. This is essentially just text. But I think it's not labeled as, it says text, that's text. This is no longer needed inside of the first group since we've moved it out. That's there, that's there. Regular log text. I'm gonna try to be organized as much as possible. Hey, Sir Legna, how are you doing? What's up, Manu Gaming? What's up? What's up? You have hard pictures as HP bars. They're overlapping and kind of clunky to expand. Um, are you doing it like as one gauge, like one bar? Or are you having like a, a conditional statement that's checking a variable and if that variable is five then you show five and four and you show four like it depends on how you're doing it are you like stretching out an image or does each of the hearts have their own individual like switch or variable condition I know what you're talking about though you want it to look something like Legend of Zelda hearts and stuff like Link to the Past type thing
Same, same to you, Sir Legna. Hope you're having a good day, sir. <clears throat> you're trying to make an RPG inside of Unity? <clears throat> 2D or 3D? Super Smash. Let's keep working here. Doesn't it have an asset st I believe there is a an asset store, and even though it's called a store, there are lots of free things in there. Did you check there yet? Did you scroll through and check? Bridge log text. Oh, I forgot to update this to say birch log. So you did check there. Is that where you wasted an hour? Yeah, I mean, typically if it's worth the shit, it's going to cost money. There are some good free stuff out there on the Unity Asset Store. I haven't spent too much time. I know I have wasted some time on it as well. You downloaded a creator kit RPG. It was a <laughs> waste of time. Well, Unity is its own beast. It's it's a big monster. It's very CPU intensive as well, which is like I get it, but at the same time, like all I'll be doing is like having a GUI thing set up and it's like using a bunch of my CPU and I'm like, why? Where Where is this coming from? I'm not like even before I start drawing particles or making emitters, it's like, is this mining crypto on like a Unity server somewhere? Because it certainly feels like it. Don't get me wrong, Unity's cool, I like Unity. I just don't use it very often. And the only thing I've ever made with it is like little prototypes. Like I made a, a, a 3D mapping, uh, like I used the 3D mapping and I made like a platformer, a 3D platformer, but not a full game, just like a guy running around and, and making like, I was testing out C-sharp stuff and I made like a springboard uh, code. I did like some stupid shit and um, ragdoll physics and I downloaded a lots, uh, lots of uh, free prefabs, is what they call them. And I messed around with a bunch of free, free prefabs and um, put it in a controller prefab thing. And and I, I learned with rigging. I learned how to do a little bit of rigging. Uh, but like ultimately, I didn't get anything really done. Then uh, before I even started that, I messed with the user interface and I made a start screen. I think I have a video of it actually. I made a start screen. This would be for current progress and for max progress. And then I added like particle effects. I will say the particle engine's good. I liked that part of it. But I, I was like, man, all I'm doing here is drawing a start screen and it's using a ton of my CPU and I didn't get it. But I haven't touched it in months, maybe a year. So maybe it's been optimized or changed in a way that it doesn't need to run as many uh, parallel processes or whatever is happening. Unity is a real man's engine. <laughs> I mean, give it a few more years. Unity is going to have a similar stigma. It already does. Let me just be honest. Unity games already have a stigma, just like RPG Maker games have a stigma. Why? There's so many cut-paste shitty games. Like, you, do you know how many zombie survival games there are on Unity with using Unity Engine? It's like, it's the default RTP assets of RPG Maker games, but on Unity. And that already exists. There's so many cookie-cutter... It's the same first-person shooter, uh, zombie shooter game. Like, they're all the same, and they all suck. You know, there's very few breakout ones that do well. It's just like, uh, Unity is like RPG Maker in, in that way. 
that it already has a stigma. So I would not go far as to say Unity is a real man's engine. I will say um, any engine you want to use, you can make a baller, kick-ass game on it. Pretty much. Pretty much almost any engine. Well, I can't say any engine because there's some real bullshit engines out there. But most engines, most game engines out there can make a really, really good game if you want to do the work. If you don't want to use uh, a bunch of... Uh, copy pasted prefabs and you you know you don't want to use other people's same code that's been regurgitated over and over and you do some customization you you put in the work put in the time you get some um, your own custom art and you, you really put in love and effort and time and not just time but like work time i don't know you can stare at your screen and have rpg maker open for eight hours that doesn't necessarily mean you've been working for eight hours right you 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 can look on Steam and see, uh, you know, oh, I've got 16,000 hours on RPG Maker. That's not 16,000 hours of actual time using the engine. You know, I'm sure there are several thousands hours that I put in on RPG Maker, but not 16,000 hours of working time. It's just been open that long, you know? All right, we're getting there. I'm getting distracted a little bit, but thank you for the questions, and I love the comments, and I love interacting with you guys. I'm going to do the same thing for the next tier. I'm going to copy this entire setup, and I'm going to paste it in here. And I'll put it in an area that I think looks right. Maybe 208, because I went with 104. So let's go ahead and keep the same distance. Let's right click and drag this in here. Expand it. I'll right click edit. Call this one the next tier, which is, what did I call it? Petrified? Petrified log? I think I did. jack five button background which we need to run lumberjack five on train lumberjack five text long text petrified log icon Lumberjack 5 current progress and the max is Lumberjack 5 max progress. Might as well get the last one while we're here. Copy, paste this in here. Bring this up to 208. Let's edit. Change it to, of course, driftwood log. Put this in here. That's what she said. Sir Legna says, the only real man engine is the one you made yourself. I kind of like that. That's pretty good. There you go. Wrath says, I've, I'm on a little break from Unity since I've been learning MV3D. I always think how funny it is to use a 2D engine to... 
um, try to make a 3D game using like hacks. MV3D is like hacking the Pixie JS 3D engine, which it can totally do. It's just like you're gonna have so many uh, incompatibilities with other plugins that it'll be it'll be rough, man. Not that you couldn't do it. I hope for the next iteration of RPG Maker, we have some 3D elements. That would be pretty tight. Like if um, if it had some smile game builder type of thing, like a map that could be viewed in like rotating isometric 3D or something. I don't know, 2.5D stuff going on. Maybe add some like, what was the game? Octopath Travelers types of filters to it. De like artificial depth in like, there's so many cool things you could do if you wanted to really innovate. I don't know if uh, Yoji Ojima will be interested in changing as much as I feel needs to change. I think people get set in their ways and they figure out a formula that works and sells, but for how long? You have to, you have to move with the times in order to keep selling like you want it to sell. Obviously, you, you have a formula that's worked before, but if you keep repeating the same thing over and over, yeah, you can't expect the same success over and over because so many variables change over time. Sentiment changes. Um, competi competing engines, competitive other engines change. And like, I think more needs to change. Don't get me wrong, I, I love the format, but I feel like it could be improved upon. And had it and if it does change drastically, it's not like I'm gonna jump ship really. You know, I've I've made my bed. I'm going to I'm going to lay in this bed, and uh, and learned the new format, whatever it is. If it's a new format that's got a completely flips the whole engine on its head and it looks completely different. Well, I'm going to learn that, ain't I? Loyalty. That's what it is. Brand loyalty. That doesn't mean I don't use other engines and acknowledge when they get things right and wrong. But everybody knows where my main thing is at, and that's RPG Maker. <sighs> I think there should be more third-party tools like uh, SRD's HUD Maker. And I think to uh, discourage people from making tools like this is foolish. Um, you want more stuff like this, not an uh, absence of these things. Like uh, Effects Seer, just like SRD's HUD Maker. In, in a way, it's a third party tool that integrates nicely, beautifully with, uh, with the engine. And uh, I think Effects Seer is great. And uh, there's a new version of it, by the way. It's 1.6, I think. I don't know. Um, you can get the plugin if you do want to use the new stuff in Effects here, version 1.6, I think. Gosh, I think that's the right one. Uh, you have to use a plugin, which is simple. Copy paste it into your JS plugins folder, and then, you know, there it is. Put in, go click this thing, put it in there. Bada boom. Now you can use better animations. Okay, I've got to finish this. Um, this should be Driftwood Log. So this is Lumberjack 6 button background. <clears throat> and we're going to call run Lumberjack 6. I have a hue changer, but it doesn't seem to actually change anything. Activation type switch 2. Switch 2, which one is Oh, when Lumberjack is on. So that's not actually doing anything. I should probably go through and delete that. You can't hue slide a button, apparently. Which I don't understand why you wouldn't be able to. But that's just the nature of it. Same thing with text. You're not able to hue uh, cycle through the through that as well. But now that I've got it up, I've got it set this way. And they're all using switch two. They would all, if it was working, I would turn them off anyway because they would all glow rainbow. They would cycle through the rainbow like Skittles when you're training any of them. 
So let's just delete that and I'll go retroactively and fix that. Boom, boom, boom. I'm back with Liddy Rat Part 2. Wood log text. Nice. I think that's all set up and good to go. Check that out, man. Let's let's go here. Let's train birch to make sure that it fills up the birch progress bar, gives experience, gives the right item, and the icon actually is the right thing that flies up. Looks right. Sweet. Let's check petrified wood. And each of these should take one second more than their previous one. I suppose we should have level requirements. as well Ooh. Oh. that's some good progress right there and with the current setup I have I can make these icons instead of 300% or maybe they're 200% I can make them a little bit smaller and then um, the number smaller and resize them and make room for two more and add two more things and so that opens up to have instead of six tiers we can have um, eight tiers of items but I'm gonna stop with this for now and move on to another type of skill and you can see already we haven't even been running this for very long and the skill level has already gone up to 25 so you get progress pretty quickly and I, I kind of like that maybe we put in the the skill level restrictions now that we know that they're working sir Legna says no I want to keep the 2d base 2d forever no, no no I'm not saying get rid of 2d sir Legna I'm saying allow for 3d like smile game builder as an option is it extra work is it going to be more yeah of course it is but you've already got the 2d made so think about what you have to to make you don't have to redesign an all new 2d system you have it it's like when you went from mv to mz you didn't have to redesign everything from scratch it was kind of a lot easier than going from vx ace to MV. Am I right? I'm right. You're converting a whole Ruby base into JavaScript base. Now that that took some time and effort and money. But going from MV to MZ, you're refining your JavaScript and fixing some bugs and fixing some stuff, right? You didn't redesign it all from scratch. No, you did not. So I think you keep that inside the next RPG Maker three years from now and add a new th option, add a new thing, add, add a new potential 3D type of thing so that you can map with 3D. I hate mapping in, in uh, RPG Maker, I really do. Uh, I, I, it drives me insane, I just, there's the way the auto tiles work. And you can keep all that, right? Because pe some people have learned it, they've put in the time, like it, blah, blah, blah. You can have it, you keep it. Add it to the next engine as an option, but also make an all new one, make it 3D, terrain that you can plop down tiles in an easy way and add like blender model files to put your own custom tile sets in and make it 
as simple to add your own custom stuff as possible because that is where it's going to really really matter adding your own stuff into the into a new engine is monumental so you need to make it easy for people to add new uh, things of their own don't come up with too many arbitrary um, formatting conventions too many arbitrary formatting conventions will confuse people and make it more make more barriers to entry so I think it, it should be very simple uh, on how to add your own resources Adding your own tile sets in RPG Maker is a pain in the ass because of arbitrary conventions that because they're already used and already known by some people. I've been, you know, very few, right, actually know how to set up proper auto tiles. If you ask me how to do it, I'll say, I don't know. Uh, you're going to have to look it up because I have tried and and I, I figured out how it works but I still can't make, I still haven't decided it was worth the effort to make my own. And most people haven't. I think that that's where a big problem lies. And, and I don't think that was in, intentional. And, and if it was, then I'm trying to figure out what's the motive for making it obfuscated and, and, and complicated. The only thing I could th draw, draw back to is, well, if it's hard to do, then people will pay for someone else to do it. Therefore, we can sell more DLCs. Now, if that was the case, you have to weigh ease of use of the engine and its mainstream acceptance versus selling more DLC. What's going to make more money in the long run, right? And if it was intentional to sell more DLC, then from a business perspective, I understand their approach, but I still disagree with it. But if it wasn't intentional and it was just an arbitrary thing, uh, because somebody thought that this is, um, it was easy. It was, it was simple to understand because they're the one who made it. it. And it's, it's, you have to look at the same thing as a dev's perspective, looking at your player base. When you're, when you're making your switch statements and you're going, you have to talk to this guy to go back to this person. And you have to collect this item to go back to deliver it to this person. To you, it's a simple, simple, go flip this switch, go back, flip the switch. But if you don't do a good job, and telling the player where they're supposed to go. They're never going to know that that one spot is where the switch is at. So they won't ever find that switch and they'll waste their time backtracking trying to figure it out. And I feel like that's what's happen happening when people try to make their own tile sets. They can't figure out the, the proper arbitrary formatting. Okay, I've gone off on a tangent. <laughs> And you have to calm them with the power up. <laughs> this is super smash. I don't know what you guys are talking about. What's up, Barry? How you doing? Hey, Skepsis D. Don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm more or less just rambling a little bit about prospects I'd like to see in the next RPG Maker and stuff I'd like to see in the future. I mean, obviously, if uh, MZ is young and if they really want to rebrand it a little bit and they can do some drastic changes and make it make it really completely different but they're always afraid of changing it too much to the point of failure well if you don't you're gonna fail because not taking a risk is taking a risk you understand this what's up score bunny how are you doing hello what's up blood tree Reminder to everyone to drink lots of water and eat 10 eggs a day. I'll fucking die if I eat 10 eggs a day. I can only eat like one or two eggs. And they better be fully cooked. Because my stomach hates me. I'm lactose intolerant and, and I have some kind of uh, stomach pain if I eat more than like one egg a day. Or, you know, sometimes I can eat two eggs if I don't eat anymore for the, like a few days. And if I eat runny eggs, man, it's like diarrhea, bro. It's not good. And I don't understand. And it, this has been my whole life. This has been my whole life. Except for when I was a young kid. When I was a young kid, I could eat eight eggs, seven eggs, six eggs. It didn't matter. But, like, after a certain point, I don't know, it was sometime in my teenage years. Because I, I, I ate a bunch of eggs. And, uh... 
and then I paid for it dearly. And ever since then, I'm like, okay, well, let's cut it down to four. Let's cut it down to three. Let's cut it down to two. And now two eggs is a maybe. The older you get, the worse it gets. The same thing with lactose intolerance, I've noticed. I can't eat ice cream anymore. Life's miserable. Just kidding. Life's great. <laughs> but, but, I mean, you can't eat ice cream? That sucks, right? I eat, like, sherbets and... And like fruit blend pops and stuff. You know, like, I don't know. But like, I used to enjoy ice cream a lot. I can eat like uh, non dairy ice cream. The yolk filled days of youth. How's it going, human being? I feel like I'm late for a good rant. <laughs> you were eating like 15 eggs a day. I remember seven. I remember I could eat, I could eat seven. Six, seven, eight eggs in one day as a kid. It shocked my dad. He's like, really? You want more? And I was like, yeah. But, like, eventually that goes away and trying to do that to your body. You, you, well, not maybe not for everybody, but for me. I realize everybody's a different case. MZ needs camera zoom controls. Yeah, that's the... That's just one of the many things it needs, Wrath of Wood. I, I complain a lot about the engines, but everybody knows, like, I'm loyal to RPG Maker, and I've, I've used RPG Maker for a very long time, and will continue to use RPG Maker, even if it sees, like, declining sales or whatever. Not saying that's the case, but uh, I will continue to carry that flag as long as I can. But at the same time, I'm going to bitch, and I'm going to complain about what I don't like to the end. And I'm going to, you know, make recommendations on what I think. What it should do. Sometimes I'm right, you know. Sometimes I'm not. But, I don't know. I think I have a decent track record of what people would want. And I agree with those who agree with me. <laughs> What's up, man? Uh, Blood Tree, how you doing, man? You used to drink raw eggs? You thought it would make your muscles grow? It was a lot of protein. Do not. Do not do that. Yeah, he even says, would not recommend it. Cook your eggs, guys. <laughs> yeah. Just cook them well. Me too, I, like, I used to like omelets. I would make two eggs and a piece of cheese. I'm going to make a couple sunny side eggs, throw a piece of cheese, let the cheese melt, and then eat it. Yeah, nothing runny. Nothing runny. Like, I can... A little bit of, run, of runny yolk is okay. Just a little bit of runny yolk, but, like, nothing white runny. Like, the egg whites got to be fully cooked. I don't even mind if they're burned a little bit. Like, if it starts getting crispy, I don't care. It just cannot be runny. Tease the other way around. She doesn't want it singed at all it's it's got to be she likes it cooked but little runny's okay with her and i'm like ah, no it's got to be all the way cooked man the only little bit of runny i would be accepting of is a little bit of a yolk runny yolk barry aka van t with a 25 dollars super chat barry thank you so much man i appreciate that very very kind of you i appreciate that super chat 25 bucks from barry guys very nice how are you feeling today, Barry? What are you up to? What you been doing lately, man? You working on a project? You make whiskey, Super Smash? You make potato you make potato whiskey? That's It's tight. Barry says I've been thinking about talking about that. This I eat proper three eggs raw a day. You eat three raw eggs a day? It doesn't affect your stomach? It doesn't make you feel green? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make you feel a little liquid gut? You know what I'm saying? Is there a reason, Barry? Is it you, you need quick protein?
Let's go back and see. Lumberjack progress will, will play no matter when, no matter what I'm actually playing. Then it shows the number. I feel like I need to update that menu as well a little bit. Let me go to main menu. Let's bring current task a little bit down, a little bit to the left. Bring this number back a little bit like so. And then bring this number back as well. Save this and update that. Current task needs to be a little bit smaller font. Let's go with 24. And this one can also go down a bit to 28, I suppose. 26 maybe. What font size is this, 42? Let's do 40. Let's try to make everything fit. Let's bring this forward a little bit. Save this. Obviously current task needs to be aligned to the left. And then we can just put it in the bottom corner. And then we'll put this along the bottom. Save this. I love the auto update feature. Now, current task, lumberjack progress, level 32. I feel like we can add a little bit of stuff there as well. We'll bring this out just a little bit. Hmm. Do I really need to include the word progress? I don't think I do. So let's update that real quick. You blend it with something, Barry? Like, what do you blend it with? Like, um, I used to be like you for sure. Couldn't even eat pepper or even grease. I eat a lot of pepper and spices though, but, but raw eggs messes me up. Doctors said, uh, your gallbladder was toxic. Really? Hmm. So does eating raw eggs help gallbladder in some way? Is it the egg whites or the, the egg yolks or is it both? I had no idea about any of that. Soju? I don't think I've ever had that. I remember when I had tikka masala for the first time. It just put like the biggest smile on my face. But then it also gave me gas because it has uh, cream in the sauce, the orange sauce. And uh, I didn't know that, but like now I do. Lactose, I'm lactose intolerant, so cream has a lot of lactose in it and gives me gas. So I don't drink milk or anything with cream in it. And you'll be surprised how many things have cream in it. Even like some potato chips and stuff. Like the seasoning. I can eat cheese and I can eat butter. And, and non-dairy um, ice cream. Like almond milk stuff. KB likes tikka masala. It's so good, right? We we started making it after I went to an Indian restaurant and had tikka masala for the first time. I was like, I have to learn how to cook this, and so I did. T and I make tikka masala every now and then, even though it has cream in it. I I bought these like dairy pills, and I don't eat cream very often, but I make exception like once a month maybe for tikka masala, and I take like two of those uh, lactose. I think it's just literally lactase or something. And it's like the enzyme that my body doesn't produce that lets me that lets you eat break down the fats in milk. And I have this. It's called Now Brand. Um, like it, it's like a a supplement. It's a supplement, and it helps you break down the fats in uh, dairy, in lactose, and in, in milk products, and it helps you not have gas. What's up, Dan? With a plan? How you doing, man? This HUD maker looks nuts. Oh man, it's, it's just started. There's like not even a lot going on with it yet. And it's been pretty simple. I haven't really done too much. I made one of the skills with the six items and the progress bar. And and a lot of it, most of it is handled right here and oops, sorry, not this one. And the and the database. Once again, I, I don't know why this pops up on another menu, but sh Windows key shift and up arrow to move it. And I, it'd be much easier to click here and drag it, but because it pops up blocking off all of this bar, you can't even click it. Like, you can't drag and drop. Like, it's just weird, man. I wish they would optimize and fix that. And it's not MZ, because it does this. 
it's Windows 10 because that happens with other applications as well. Anyway, I handle most of it through the common events. So I try to put as much into the engine as possible and then um, just use the HUD maker to call the common events. Instead of running the code from HUD maker, I have it all ran inside the MZ engine. Barry says, I'll spare you the speech about how our food industry... Oh, you don't have to give me a speech on it. I, I understand a lot about how um, we our body needs fats, but the world and the United States has m made it sh like so that fats are bad, but really, uh, and, and sold you spoon, like, like just like pounds and pounds of sugar in, in your diet. And really, you don't need that much sugar, and you do need fats. So, like, I understand... And our bread is not even bread anymore. He goes, anyway, uh, I'll spare you that about our food industry. But yeah, not the best. They only care about, well, money. And that's cool, but at the sacrifice of healthy food. You should check out cutting back all the carbs and sugars for a while. Completely understand where you're coming from. And agree. Have you read the book? It's called Wheat Belly. Barry, it's a really good book. It's called Wheat Belly. And it goes into what you're talking about right here. Recommend that book. There, you know what? There's a bunch of them. I can't remember the actual authors of the one that is good, but it's called Wheat Belly. <laughs> Blood Tree consumes the tears of his enemies for maximum nutrition. I agree, human. So does health food and diet industry. Yep. Selling false cures. Snake oils. There's a lot of snake oils. Just because it says organic doesn't even mean it is anymore. Well, the thing about bread these days is they're, they're not complex carbs anymore. They're simple carbs. They break down and turn into sugar, like quickly. So what happens when you eat like a slice of white bread, or even a lot of other breads too, when you, when you eat bread, not all breads, but a lot of bread that, that simple sugars, they break in the simple carbs break down into sugars and then you have an insulin spike. And so you have a, uh, it literally gets you high for like a short period of time. And then after about an hour, depending on your metabolism, right? And how fast you burn it, but then you crash and you go back to needing more of that and it becomes an addictive cycle. So bread is literally a drug that they're selling you. So is sugar, but bread turns into sugar in that way. Score bunny channel. Stop chatting, guys. What do you... Why? Oh, are you trying to... Are you, are you trying to... Oh, my bad. I'm, 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 like, losing track. I'm, like, stop. I'm not even using the engine when I'm talking too much. Sorry about that. I like to talk with people and engage and socialize, and I apologize if it detracts from what I'm actually doing and showing off. If you have a specific question, Score Bunny, feel free to ask it, like because I don't mind taking time and, and helping you figure something out if you're stuck with something, as well. So um, they don't have to stop chatting, but just let me know what you what you want, and maybe we can make time for you too. All right. <laughs> Man who says white breads are just like sugar Eat traditional bread from France Or maybe complete bread I don't know the name for it in America Carbs are supposed to break down as fuel over time Right, that's complex carbs But there are things called simple carbs And simple carbs are quickly broke down And turned into sugar immediately and then you have the same thing as if you ate a candy bar. You'll have a rush, and then you'll have a crash, and then you'll feel bad and actually have a craving. It's literally a drug. Subway has had several, like, scandal things. All right, what was I doing next? I... I got done, like, really quickly what I was planning on doing, and that's sort of the problem, because, like, all right, I didn't really make 
too many extra plans for what I wanted to get done today. I wanted to make sure that I uh, changed the way that the Lumberjack menu looked so that I didn't have redundancy in the skill bar for all of these. I wanted to increase the size and I wanted to add all of these and make sure they work. And everything just worked immediately. So that was great. That was great. Do things. What's the next thing we should do? We should totally add um, another skill like mining, right? All right, let's go into the database and um, oh my freaking freaking there it is let's add items let's do that do you see where change maximum comes up see it cuts it off on the other thing right there I have to go like this it does that to all the menus anything that pops up and I don't understand why I bet if I close it and reopen it on this menu on this one it might fix it Let's do that. I'm going to change my items to 50 real quick. I'm going to just hit OK and save the game and close the engine. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to close the other instance of the engine I have running up as well. Because I do have another instance up. I'll show you what I was doing in Amalgamation. We're going to do some Amalgamation stuff too soon. I have to close, I have to close this running. You can only have one instance of the t test play up at the same time. Horse head, horse head, horse head. But check it out. I've got like this little Minecraft thingy where you you have like a, a pickaxe strength and then you have to like dig your way through. <laughs> you can even dig through here. Oh wait, no, these were, these were the sample one, the different ones. But uh, I have it like this, right? Is it this one? Yeah. And you can make your maps like this. Do you guys want a tutorial on how to do this? Because I was thinking about making one. Take a little bit of work. Oh yeah, you can also have chests behind them. And then when your pickaxe runs out of stamina, it's like pink. Can't go, can't dig anymore. Pretty cool, huh? Anyway, save and close this. And then let me save and close this. And let me get steam running. And run MZ again. Hmm. It's strange that it opened Amalgamation when the last thing I saved and closed was not Amalgamation. Hopefully now it will, when I press the database, there it is. It doesn't open this on the other menu and everything I open pops up on another uh, screen monitor. All right, so I've made space. Let's add six different types of, of ore. You'd love to see a tutorial for that digging mechanic? Okay. Chris Williams asks, hey Drifty, do you have Windows display scaling set to anything other than 100% that can cause wonky? I do. Uh, this is a 4K monitor that I've got scaled so that it looks right. You know what I'm saying? Because if you try to stream a 1080p stream with on a 4K monitor, it doesn't, it doesn't do it. You know what I'm saying? You have to like downscale, downsample. So yeah, that's causing some, some wonkiness. But... I've, I've found a quick fix close the application and make sure it's on that window when you close it and then reopen it so that it opens starting with that monitor anything less than 150 will be super tiny text yeah 4k monitors are great but you literally have to zoom in and kind of ruins the the need for the 4k like 1440p is really all you need right now uh, for 4k is for flexing on scrubs that's really all it is and if you're drawing, if you're sketching like with digital art, 4K helps because you get fatter pixel density. You can start with bigger, um, you know, like 5,000 by 5,000, uh, not template, but like, what is it called? I guess template. 5,000 by 5,000 resolution uh, blink screen. Canvas, canvas, that's the word I was looking for. 
You could make a mining minigame with it, that's true. Okay. Uh, I need to come up with some names, find some icons, and let's add the timer bars for mining. Hey, Square Bunny. One, two, three, four, five, six. That'll work. This all looks like ore. We actually have eight and nine if you count blank empty dirt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You think resolution should have stopped at 1080p? Nah, I don't think it's need to stop. So here, let's this one, this one, and this one all look like the same color. These orange dark orange and then kind of amber. So what I'll do is say this is one, but you know, these two look similar as well. So I just need six good ones. This green was very distinct. This like white silver is pretty distinct. Obviously we can use like one of these for iron or steel or something. I'm wondering if I should use um, real names of metals or make my own mineral names. I think I'm gonna just fabricate mineral names because it's like, well, actually, gold is not very malleable, so it doesn't. It shouldn't be actually have more defense than something that's made of steel because steel is a lot more. Like I know, I understand. Gold armor is not practical at all. In fact, it wouldn't really protect you that much at all. But it's often stronger than like steel armor and has higher stats in most games just because of rarity of gold. Now. I don't really care for the realism and like saying that gold is more malleable so it shouldn't have as much defense as steel or iron, right? I don't care. I don't care at all. In fact, I care so little that I will make my own fake names up so no one can even debate me on uh, <laughs> what is more dense. You know, what's dense to your skull is what I ref what's my rebuttal. All right. Let's make our own names. In fact, I've done that. Nintendium is unbreakable. <laughs> Unobtainium. Realism is for realism is just boring, right? I agree. Driftite. <laughs> it's the most dense metal, right? I have I have several uh, fake names of minerals, and I've I've used them quite a bit. Let's start with. Uh, um, obs I have a mithril is a known one. Obsidian is known, quite common, but it's always there. They can be placed anywhere. Um, it's funny when you'll get like Lord of the Ring nerds talking about mithril being um, more dense than like other metals you're using, and <laughs> I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> That's just what I. They're just numbers on a screen. I don't give a shit. But whatever you, whatever conventions you, you find, you stick to them and use them, right? So we decide early on what's the order of things. And what I would normally go for is what looks the coolest, that's going to be the strongest. Do I want to use these Kaz icons for the ores? I, I feel like that's our best bet. Let me keep scrolling through some icons. Maybe we have a nice set that is comparable or like better in some way how you doing Jacob these could possibly work too just because they are simple and there's a number of them that look different like you've got this bright sky blue and then you have like a really faded dull blue yellow purple red and green that like that could work too these could work these could work i mean this could probably work too it looks a little weird though these look more like gems than ore to me sweet could definitely use these for the smelted bars afterwards when we get the next one which will probably be smelting I'll probably do mining and then I'll do like smelting or something got some nice icons for like herbalism plenty of things for that or like a gathering skill I'm not sure I haven't put you know I don't have a, 
a PDF file with the full plan. But I have a general idea. I don't want to go back to using VXAce icons that have been resized for MV that have been translated into MZ as well. It's like, let it go, right? We gotta let it go. Gotta move on. No, I think Kaz still has the best icons for this. I think we're gonna just go with Kaz's because they, they they look more like ores. Because ores usually dirt and rock and minerals mixed together and like stone with different mineral veins running through them. And like this looks more like ore than, you know, the, the other ones I was looking at. Anyway, so we'll go with that. One, two, I would like to keep them straight across, but obviously. I feel like this one and this one look too close to use both of these. So we're not gonna do that. And then these two also look too close to use. And I would say of these two, this one's the darker. And then of these three, this one's the lightest. So we're gonna skip this one and this one. And we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. That makes sense. One, two, three, four, five, six. The only two that look a lot alike are this amber color, but then you have like this golden amber color, orangish and more yellowish. These two kind of look the same, but because they're in a, they look, the colors are similar, but the icons themselves are different. They'll stick out as different ones, more so than these two or these two. So I'm, gonna, I'm fine with this decision and final. This one is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now that we've figured that out, we have to come up with names for them. All right, so this is the first one. And we're gonna call it regular iron, right? It's just gonna be iron ore. That's your starting density, iron. Everyone knows iron is strong, it's good. And we'll, that'll be the baseline beginners. And then we'll have fabricated fake, super strong, dense metals that are fantasy. And then no one can debate them because I made them up. <laughs> Set them free. Take them to the cliff and just let them be free. <laughs> be free, icons. The descriptions don't seem to matter because I haven't called them into play, so I'm going to ignore them for now. If I feel like I want to show or, dis or display or draw the descriptions of them later on, then I will fill them in. I did that for the first uh, lumber tier, but I don't. I obviously still don't use them, the descriptions, so I'll leave them blank for now. And as they're needed, I will, I will fill them in later on. Regular item doesn't need a scope. In fact, you can't even access the menu at all, so this won't matter. But I want to be, um, I want to cover my bases and not have to go through the database and fix all these later on. So in case I do give the player access to the menu for some reason, which I don't plan to, I'm going to make a, going to make a custom item inventory, graphical inventory. Same with equip scene, because it'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be a good time to. And it'll look 100% different than anybody else's because even if I were to try to copy something, it would look different because I don't have all the same resources nor using the same method. So that's a, a good way to do it. And I want it to look like you have to figure out, is this RPG Maker? I think this, wait, I'm not sure. It's probably RPG Maker, but I'm not sure. That's what I'm going for. And the clicker, the idle clicker. I want someone to question it and go like, this might be Game Maker, or like they can't tell. And not that I don't want it to be seen as an RPG Maker game, but the point is to not look like every other RPG Maker game out there. And it's an idle game I'm not looking for, it's not gonna be, you know, it's just a little, little stupid idle game. And I'm okay with this. All right, iron ore. We'll just go ahead and copy this to save some time. And then the next one we were choosing is this one. And we'll call this one dark steel. I mean, that, that's a very fantasy one as well. Copy, paste. Um, then this, we're going with this one. Mm, obviously, we're going to pick amber. Amber steel or something like that. But I don't know. 
which one of these two we want to call Amber Steel. Oh, I know what we can do. Um, let's do that one fantasy names generator website and, and see if it has a name for ores or name for metals. You know what website I'm talking about? Let me find it. I've used it a lot. I haven't used it in a little while, but I, I remember like a few weeks ago I brought it up on screen trying to help somebody figure something out. Uh, game dev. Here we go. This is it. Fantasy name generators. Other names. Help me look for it. I'm looking for like ore or like metal names. We have to find the right generator. Material names. That's a good one. We can go with material names. Let's go with material names, but then keep looking. Uh, meteor names. Potion names. Rune. Satellite names. Scientific plant names. Fantasy name generator site is really good. Back in the day when I used to ad block, I whitelisted this one. I was like, I want to make sure I'll watch ads for this site because they're so cool. I wanted to make sure they made at least a few pennies on me. I don't ad block anymore. But I do pay YouTube begrudgingly 15 bucks a month so that we don't see ads. Software names. A lot of these would probably give you some idea. I think the one we picked first would make the most sense. There's no or names. M N O P. There's no O's. What about metal names? Is there a metal? Material names. We're gonna go with probably material names. Game engine names? Really? Really? Game engine names? I just wanna look to see that in a second. Drug names. Chosen one titles. You were supposed to bring balance to the farts. Well, material names it is. Okay. Sure, okay. Wonder glass, thunder wool, moon velvet, fire resin. Let's let's look at the icon that we're that we're gonna have to find a name for. It looks like this. Like amber, like I'm thinking amber, but that's actually like a resin. And then amber steel, eh, it's kind of lame. Maybe it would work if I don't find anything else. So it's kind of like orangish, orangish. Prism, that's kind of like a rainbowish nickel. I like calling it that. Something could be nickel. Wonder Glass, Supreme Titanium, English names, Doomweave, Aegis Nylon, Shadow Glass, Mystery Wool, and I like taking the first name of something and, and putting it, the second name of something else together, so just because it says Mystery Wool, you can be like, Mystery Paper, you know, it's up to you. $5 Super Chat from CC Creations, thank you for the five bucks, appreciate that. They say there was a metal element named generator back. Th really? There was? Thank you for the five bucks, CC Creations. I appreciate it. Metal name? Metal element name. I didn't see that. It, it Was it in other names? Maybe go fantasy names. Maybe I have to click on fantasy names. Metal element? M-E, I passed it. They're alphabetical, luckily. What about if I check E's? Element name? No, no, down. So it's in other names? <laughs> God! Sorry. 
Oh shit, it's literally right there. Metal slash element names. How did I not see that? I, I was for sure that it was there. Distractions. I, I'm just, just, you know, it's just distractions. Thank you, CC Creations, for the five bucks and helping me see it. This is kind of what I was looking for. Zeswedian, Yadruthil, Quachathil, Sehoichium, Siam, Protrium, Cleontine, Smalium, <laughs> Smell bad. Eflil, Oclean, Zebrine, Sosnoilium, Jagleonium, Ufriudian, Tushuidor. I'm sure I'm saying something weird in another language. <laughs> Scorbunny, I said hello three times. What do you want from me, Scorbunny? Yaklian. Trionis. That sounds tight. Trionis? Trionis or. Okay, I like that one. Let's just look one more time. Treosium. That sounds tight. Posnian or. Nestite. Dresium. That sounds kind of cool too. Caglium. That's also a cool name. There's, all right, I think we found. I'm going to use Trionese for the orange one just because nobody can say, actually, gold is less dense than steel, so you shouldn't make it stronger. Like, well, what about Trionese ore, huh? How dense is Trionese? You don't know. Can't argue with me on that one. You don't know how dense Trionese is. <laughs> all right, let's copy paste what's the next one it's like a silver but i'm not gonna call it silver or because uh, we're gonna we're gonna go with fantasy name generator let's find one it's like a whitish silver type of thing um Eskine. i don't want it to be too many letters <laughs> peshis Muskian? It's too much like a musician. Snoonies. That sounds funny. <laughs> Deskies. Vosnian. Ooh. Vosnian. What about Labrian? Labrian? It's got the name Brian in it. Trudium. Trudium? Oh, that's tight. That's a that's a sweet name. Let's go with Trudium. What's your name? It's Trudium. People call me Trudium. Oh wait, but it's too much like Trionis. They both have like tr. They're both T R. Trudium. Trionis or Trudium or. Ah, oh, they're too close. All right, let's find another one. Lacrite. What do you like to drink? I like to drink Lacrite. It's much better than other carbonated liquids. I smell my own farts and drink Lacrite. Tathum. Lasties. <laughs> it's like, I got firsties, I got lasties. Ushel. That could work. Woolium. Sounds like cloth. Fodrianor. It's too long. People have a hard time pronouncing X. So I don't really use it. People either say Z. And in China it's like a ch, -ch sound. Like a CH sound. I think. Drotium. Bracium. That is a tight name. We're going to use Bracium. Alright, this is going to be called Bracium. So we have Trionis and Bracium. All right, good. Let's copy this. Let's go to the next one. This one is, unfortunately, it's, you know, it is what it is, and that's all that it is. It's going to be another amber-like color, but different. It's, it's kind of sucky that we have, we have like a, ste a regular steel color, and then we have like an orange color, 
and then we have another steel color, and then another orange color, you know? Ugh. I kind of want to pick different icons. Just because there's not enough variety. You have a gray steel color, and then you have an orange color. Like, iron and copper, I get it, and then, like, some kind of dark steel. But we're making fantasy names up, so we can we can get away with, like, purples and blues and greens and and other colors. Oh, man. I, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, I know. I know. I'm just... I'm going to switch it up. Ushul sounds cool. Bracium. Celestium. I like that. Why not copper? Because everybody does copper, dude. 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 Everybody. Everybody. Everybody, people. Everybody know how it go. Why not hue shift the icon in a paint program? Well, because then I have to make it as an icon. Adjust my icon set, which is already massive. And it takes more time than I want it to take. And I'm not properly utilizing all of the icons that I currently have. I feel like I'm adding to the problem, not fixing it that way. I'm going to go with these right here because they're distinctly different. They're all very much different. So one, this could be iron. This could be dark steel. This could be Trionis, uh, Trionis or this could be Bracium. And then we'll have a yellow and a blue. And that works good. That works good. That works perfect. All right. So that'll be the yellow. We'll change this one. What number is that? 2052. So it's like halfway up. There they are. This is iron. Passed it fast, didn't I? Okay. This is dark steel. How do I pass it so fast? 13 Trionis. Bracium. Ah, it's not showing the right spot. Okay. Bracium is this kind of cyan color. And then the yellow one. We have to find a name for the yellow one. That's where we're at now. And then we'll need one more. A yellow. Sloinor. Drentine. Drentine. Hestum. Hestum. It's kind of cool, Hestum. Mosmum. Yethoisium. It's too much. Throw it to him. Nope. Draenor? Isn't that like a race in World of Warcraft? Tuzmite? Fogrin. Fogrin? Fogrin. Fogrin. Fogrin? I love it because it's going to confuse me. Be like, how do you say this one? <laughs> Fogrin. Fogrin. Fogrin are. I'm going to hate it myself, though. That's Cathite. Ooh, Cathite. That's kind of cool. Is that a real mineral? Probably not. Sounds like a real mineral. Cathite ore. Okay. One more. I did this before in other games as well. Except I made 13 tiers with overkill. Bestine. So this is what color? This is the blue one, right? Let's copy this. Paste this. This is the final one. The blue one. I, I think I want to go with like... Admantium, right? Come on, this is this is another one of those like dark steel, fantasy ones, right? Admantium. I think I've heard I've heard adamantium as well. Or like I've used this one before, Aegisite. Kind of like that Aegisite. Let's just go with Aegisite. 
starts with an I, D, T, B, K, A. They're all different. They all sound very much like regular metal, like a hardened type of metal. And then we go into Fantasy Realm. And then, you know, like the Aegis Shield and Oracalcum. Like those are Adamantium. Those are like like really, really hard metals and stuff. T's here! Hi! Hi, baby. Everything good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did they have a lab there? They impaled. They impaled good. my son. Good. Now we didn't have to get a piece of paper to go do another thing for him, right? I did, but it was just down the road, so I just did it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he's cool. he's not a wussy. Good. He took it like a man. Yeah. <laughs> no, Score Bunny, stop spamming me. or We're going to mute you. Oh, you already said it. Okay, I won't spam no more. No, I don't, I don't subscribe to channels just because. Like, what do you make? Do you make videos? Say, instead of saying, hey, subscribe to me, say, hey, I make uh, this type of video. If you're interested in that, check out my channel. Maybe subscribe. Like, that's the way you do it. Yeah. Don't go, subscribe. Can you, don't go to somebody's live stream and tell them to subscribe to your channel because this is their platform. To You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What kind of videos do you make? I'm not trying to put you down. I just want you to understand how you're going to get more people. What, what do you make? Tell me what videos you make. What are you into? What are your interests? What are your goals and ambitions? What's your credit card number? Just kidding. Don't, don't say your credit card number. Come on. Come on now. Use your wits. You made lots of videos about... <laughs> about... What kind of videos? Maybe you'll get a subscriber from this. What what kind of videos do you make? Because maybe, genuinely, people may be interested. But just saying subscribe to my channel on somebody else's live stream is usually called bad manners. All right, we've got the names of the ores. I've, I've actually made more progress than I was uh, planning to make. It's probably because I streamed a little bit longer than I thought I was going to. But uh, that's fine. Honey, check out this. Uh, check out the progress real quick. We yes. need to get a second. Show me progress. I want to see progress. All right. All righty then. So here is the main menu. You've seen this, right? I moved some yeah. stuff around, but nothing's really changed. We click on here. <gasps> Ooh. Look at that. That's so beautiful. So now they don't all have the same experience bar oh on them. In gosh. fact, instead of two, there's six of them here. And, so you know, nice. this, the skill level shows you down here. And this is the experience bar. And then... Uh, all of these work. They all, you know, we did most of the heavy lifting. That is so beautiful. Uh, yesterday. We can pause it and start training the you next one. You know what, one. though? It's missing one thing. What? There isn't a purple log on there. I'm highly disappointed. I know. But there's room. There's three blue ones and not a purple one. Well, there's room. I, I was going by what I had on hand for my <laughs> icon sets. I didn't design the icons myself. I'm just joking. I'm Maybe just joking. in the future we'll, we'll make our own <laughs> icons for this. But I'm just more concerned in making the the game more than the art for the game yeah. at the moment. Yeah. No, I was just, I was just, I really don't art. care. I was just joking, though. Yeah. I just saw that there was three three blue logs. Brian Perez, Super Hardium. We were thinking of names for ores, and we went to uh -huh. Fantasy Names Generator uh -huh. and looked up a bunch of different element names. Find any good ones? Oh, yeah. Some cool stuff. Some cool names. Um, Driftwood Log? Uh, yes. Aren't you supposed to put those in the toilet? <laughs> I do. <laughs> what about Trionis or you like the way that sounds? Trionis? Trionis. Yeah, that sounds cool. What about Bracium? Yeah, Bracium's all right. Like, you know, like it's fortified. It's yeah, yeah, it's okay. brace. Cathite or? Nah. You don't like that one? Nah. Okay. Aegisite. Yeah, I mean, that's, Aegisite's a, that's a classic, cool. right? Yeah. Okay, that's same yeah. thing with Dark Steel and Trionis is really neat, though. That one's But Cathite, favorite. you're not a, a fan of? I don't All know, right. It just sounds Help. too much like Kathy. I thought so, too. That was, I was my, it was my least favorite. It's, it's my least <laughs> favorite, okay? <laughs> Help me find. Okay, look at, the, look at the color. It's a yellow ore. Help me find a name. Brilliantium. It's too long. And, and it's not really that brilliant. It's like a yellow. Illustrium. <laughs> <laughs> It's terrible. Uh, we need something like Vospium. Vomitum. No, it, it can't be an actual name. Like, it's got to be some just... It's just got to sound good, but not be something that's from something else. Belchicite. Like, come on now. <laughs> Fardium. <laughs> it's a brown ore called Fardium. No, no, it's, it's turdite. It's tur... Oh, my God. 
You have to keep that. That's good. Turdite. <laughs> Brown orb. Please, just it's, have Turdite. It's, it's the old, it's the, it's the, uh, the end game. Yes. It's and the it's best ore you can get. Turdite. <laughs> No, you have to help me. What do you? What do you, you can't look away. Help me find it so we can end the stream. We got a Zos. T might. T might. Yeah. Nah. Yeah, because it's got my name in it. It sounds like there's something in my drink. I have a mite in my tea. Tea site. Tea site. Nah. Nah. It, how about you get yourself and remove your ego? Tea's jamiodite. <laughs> Subscribe to T's Jamio Diets <laughs> and I is the um. All right, I don't know. Like, I mean, come that's on. why. Look, I'm I'm giving you stuff to read. Oh. find the ones that actually sound okay. Zesmian. No, that's gay. That's right. Okay, uh, Sluenor, Drionite, Drion Most of these suck, but I mean, like, there's some good ones. Zebrium. 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 Yeah, that's cool. Zebrium. Heck yeah. Okay, just it just has like a ring, right? Yeah. Okay, Zebrium. Will beat Cathite, so Zebrium or Zebrium or <laughs> Theme Sixium. Oh, I'm so tempted right now. <laughs> just to just, fuck it, just call it Theme Sixium. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it's gotta be. It's gotta be the strongest one though. <laughs> Heraldite, <laughs> Heraldite and Theme Sixium. <laughs> oh shit. Now I want to add the 7th and 8th tiers. When I add the 7th and 8th tiers, they're going to be shit posts. Mm -hmm. They're literally going to be like Theme 6 Log and, and Heraldite Ore. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, dude. I didn't want to do it. But you're just literally spamming and plugging your own shit. I'm going to just have to hide you. In a bucket. Been going for an hour, this yeah. guy. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Did I hide the right person? Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's always good to double check. Collateral ban. Right. That's, a Some, that's happened in the past. It has. Lily actually put Boro B in timeout once. <laughs> <laughs> she was just like slapping my he phone. He was probably like, What did I do? I didn't, I don't know what I did. <laughs> yeah, and I couldn't get him out. Like, you can't reverse it. You just gotta wait for it to be over. It's like, You cannot type for another 299 seconds. <laughs> It's like, what did I do? Did I say something wrong? She was like like eight months old or something and sitting on my lap, and she just slapped the phone and put Borobi in timeout. <laughs> All right, guys. That's going to do it for today. Thank you so much. I appreciate the super chats. Thank you for tuning in and hanging out with us. We made some progress on our Ronin Clicker game. Tomorrow, we're going to be playing Amori. Our, uh, we're going to do Yay. a continuation of our Let's Play of Amori. It's getting really, really interesting storyline. Um uh, yeah, well, that link will be in the description for tomorrow for that. You can check it out. And, uh, yeah, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Join us on Discord. Links in the description below. We have a Patreon if you want to send us some money, as well as a PayPal. More of us goes, more of it goes to us on PayPal if you want that to be directed to us. Um, we will put that on the Discord and to the Wall of Heroes, which will be there eternally uh, with our thanks. And if not, don't worry. We appreciate your time very much. And we have a Twitter. Join, follow me on Twitter. What else can I plug? I don't fucking know. Bear Thank you, guys. He was flagged once for an entire stream. Yeah, that wouldn't be intentional. There's no way. There's no I've... way I would ever flag you, Vero. There's several people like I could never see be. <laughs> we, like... We're more likely to mod you than flag you. So that was definitely an accident. For real. <laughs> Sorry, man, about that. It's probably Lily. And, yeah. And but what are you going to do? Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. We'll see you guys tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's it. We're going to go. Have a good day. Bye.